The East African Federation is a proposed political union of the seven sovereign states of the East African community in the African Great Lakes region. These include Burundi, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Kenya, Rwanda, South Sudan, Tanzania, and Uganda, all coming together as a single federated sovereign state. The idea of this federation has long since existed, born in the 1960s, but has taken a long time to be made manifest and is presently still in the works for a variety of reasons. In September 2018, a committee was formed to begin the process of drafting a regional constitution, and a draft constitution for the Confederation was set to be written by the end of 2021 with its implementation by 2023. Welcome to Think Rich Africa the community which brings to you entrepreneurial, business, and personal development content to inform, motivate, and inspire you. We also want to introduce you to our special African development playlist because we strongly believe that entrepreneurship, rather than global pity, is the key to Africa's growth and development. So, if you're African and you aren't subscribed to our community, you're missing out. While Africa has generally seen many decades of instability, East African nations have made numerous attempts to collaborate and unify. The original East African community was created in 1967, which at the time used the East African shilling and standard external tariffs. This was later dissolved in 1977. This unfortunate dissolution occurred following political disputes between member nations regarding legislative seats and lack of will for nations to cooperate. There was also some grumbling within member states, particularly Tanzania, that the integration would benefit Kenya the most, as it is the most well-developed country out of all the member states. After six years of negotiation in the 1990s, the East African Community was reformed in 1999 under the East African Community Treaty with a four-step plan. Customs Union, Common Market, Monetary Union, and finally Political Federation. The East African community has remained active since then. The goal of the East African community is to widen and deepen cooperation among the partner states in various key spheres for their mutual benefit. These spheres include political, economic, and social areas. At 4,812,618 km square, approximately 1,858,000, 162 square miles, the East African Federation, EEAF, would be the largest country in Africa and seventh largest in the world, displacing India. It would span the African continent from Indian Ocean to Atlantic Ocean. With a population of 281,050,447 as of March 2022, with 22% of this population residing in the urban areas. It would also be the most populous nation in Africa and fourth most populous in the world. The seven member nations are united mainly by a shared cultural history, geography, similar dominant tropical savanna climate within the community, which lends itself to similar agricultural and seasonal practices, and a shared interest in bringing their nations out of instability and poverty. At present, the lingua franca is English, but was recently changed to Swahili, which is spoken by about 200 million persons in Africa. Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda were the original three partner stays. The Republic of Rwanda and the Republic of Burundi acceded to the East African Community Treaty on 18 June 2007. South Sudan was added to the five previous member states in 2016, and the Democratic Republic of Congo joined the fold in April 2022. Collectively, the East African community's GDP has grown 92% from $106 billion in 2010 to $240 billion in 2019. The union's proposed currency is the East African shilling, which according to a 2013 published report is slated to become the common currency of five of the seven member countries by 2023. The acting president of Kenya since 2013, Yuru Kenyatta, serves as the East African community's lead summit chairperson. Betty Mena, 
a cabinet member for Uru Kenyatta and Kenya, tasked as the Secretary for Industrialization, Trade and Enterprise Development in Kenya, is the current acting lead council chairperson. Dr. Peter Matuko Mathuki is the current acting secretary general of the EAC, having been appointed April 25, 2021, after years of serving on the East African Business Council. Also within the East African community organs, the legislative system called the East African Court of Justice resides. It is composed of five individuals who settle disputes regarding the union of the partner nations. Justice Nestor Kayobera of Burundi has served as the court's president since being appointed in 2021. Other positions within the East African community organs are the registrar of the East African Court of Justice, which is currently held by Yufnalis and Okubo, the position of the Council to the Community of the East African Community, currently held by Dr. Anthony El Kafum, the position of the Director General of Customs and Trades within the East African Community, presently held by Kenneth A. Bagam Honda, the position of the Deputy Secretary General of Productive and Social Sectors, currently held by Honorable Christoph Bazivamo, and the position of Deputy Secretary General of Planning and Infrastructure, Engineer Stephen D. M. Lote. The East African Federation can be seen to have a few foreseeable strengths. The greatest of these strengths will be the massive youth demographic, of course given that it is properly harnessed. The population of the constituent parts of the theoretical East African community is composed of 65% under 30-year-olds. This youth bulge is anticipated to grow to 75% of the population under the age of 25 in this region by 2030. The East African Federation would have a median age of 17.8 years, and ensuring these youths are on the path towards economic independence is vital to the success of the Federation. Another very significant economic benefit of the East African Federation is as a result of the Custom Union, which was introduced in 2005. It would allow for free trade within the Federation, and hence greater economic activity in the region, of course, if the Federation is ever implemented. A complementary union of goods and capital labor laws was introduced in 2010, which would act similarly, standardizing the rules in the region pertaining to these facets of the economy and allowing for greater economic flexibility. The integration and standardization in these facets of the economy under one large federation would make the area more economically appealing to a multinational corporation seeking to operate in the region as they would be dealing with one unified front rather than needing to comply with each country's tax and fiscal policies, leading to lower operating costs in the region. As an added advantage, under the control of one president, a united front will also provide easier diplomatic processes for multinational companies to deal with. From this standpoint, the economic advantages of the Federation have been cited as a rationale for global powers, such as the U.S. not opposing the Federation. Uniting a front of 280 million people and $240 billion worth of gross domestic product would have an economic appeal. These plans will not take place until 2023. These economic benefits are recognized by the people of these nations, leading to further support for the eventual union of these nations. A survey conducted in Tanzania revealed that a majority of respondents thought that the Union of the East African Federation would produce better trading opportunities in the region, and a majority also responded that the Union would provide better job availability in the region. East African community states have been receiving increased attention from foreign powers, particularly the United States and China. China's interaction with East African community nations has been mostly cooperative, as the Chinese government has had a recent interest in developing a political and economic relationship with the region. Apparently, trade talks between the East African community and China started in June 2019. With the East African community looking to foster a more balanced trade relationship with China by convincing the government to purchase more primary products like avocados. As the East African community moves closer to unification, a closer relationship with China could mean an increase in foreign direct investment in the region. 
On the other hand, U.S. actions in the region have been more adversarial, removing duty-free status from clothing imports from Rwanda after Rwanda increased duties on U.S. clothing exports. These actions are indicative of the United States' tendency to use trade policy as a means to put political pressure on other countries. In the case of the East African community, it will become increasingly difficult for the United States to put economic pressure on the region as it develops economically and forms a greater relationship with China and other Asian nations. The East African community and the proposed East African Federation have faced numerous challenges and still encounter these challenges. While the union of these nations is recognized as economically advantageous, the mechanics of conforming to the East African community's standards has posed economic issues for some countries seeking to join the EAC. The economic prosperity of the nations attempting to join here varies greatly, with Burundi holding the lowest GDP at approximately $3 billion, nearly $100 billion less than Kenya's GDP, $98 billion. This discrepancy in wealth has impeded the less wealthy nations from conforming with some of the standards set for the EAC. For instance, South Sudan took four years to accede to the EAC and still fails to meet many of the criteria set for the community. The South Sudanese president has asked for aid from fellow member countries to meet these standards, citing a lack of staffing at customs. Immigration and revenue slash tax collection as the main source for failure to meet the standards of the EAC integration process. Member nations have not been quick to help. Nations such as Kenya and Uganda are still charging visa fees on South Sudanese citizens, something EEC countries are supposed to be exempt from as part of the customs union. Politically, it has been difficult for the EAC member states to reconcile their individual political systems and unify into a common system. Tanzania, for example, has had a one-party dominant state since 1992 and made a transition to market capitalism relatively late compared to its neighbors in the EAC. Rwanda's civil conflict in the 1990s led to the rise of Paul Kagame as the linchpin of the country's political system, becoming a popular authoritarian leader. He has served as the president of Rwanda since his victory in the civil war and is the chairman of the EHC summit and a key figure in the push for unification. The game theory of political decisions between multiple authoritarian leaning governments is important to note here, as this is a key obstacle to the unification process. According to Freedom House's 2018 report on freedom in the world, four out of the six member states of the EAC are rated an aggregate score or 5.5 out of 7 or higher, with South Sudan being the highest with a 7 out of 7 score. These scores rank most of the EAC nations among the least politically free countries in the world. Additionally, the push toward globalizing the region poses problems for local workers. If, for example, Immigration increases rapidly to the EAF after unification. There are currently very few worker protections to stop local industries being overtaken by foreign companies and workers. Trade unionization and cooperation between workers' unions in member states has been posed as a solution to this issue, but current organizations lack the strong leadership needed to unite workers across the region. The proposed East African Federation, although not yet realized, has the potential to be a superpower in Africa. Whether or not this federation, which for now is still on paper, will be realized is yet to be seen. Share your thoughts in the comments section.